Hey you, are you thinking of going on exchange to Japan? <laughs> if you are, then keep on watching because throughout the entire month of February, I will be going over my own personal experience of going on exchange in Japan. So if you're somebody who's thinking that A, you either want to go on exchange in Japan, or number two, you're just curious about how the process works and considering going to Japan, then this video is perfect for you. As you all probably know from my Instagram, で、私は実は2回ぐらい日本に留学しました。そうです。私の最初の時は高校生の時でした。で、その時は北海道の函館っていう町に2ヶ月半ぐらいの留学してて、そして2年前ぐらい北海道大学に留学しましたですね。1年
more connections, meet more people, make more friends if I stayed longer. And I wouldn't be able to find out my career in six months as well as I could in one year just because you know, I wouldn't have as much time to apply for different opportunities that would come up in different times of the year. And I wanted to have enough credits by the end of it, the exchange that I wouldn't have to take an extra year when I come back to school. Meaning the exchange that I chose had to be in the same line as my current degree, which was political science and East Asian studies. So in the end, I ended up choosing Hokkaido University's JLCSP program. And the reason why is because it was the sweet spot, like the perfect balance between my goals and my deciding factors. So just a quick overview, the JLCSP program is essentially a program where you go to Hokudai for one year and you take Japanese language lessons as well as regular classes. So the reason why I chose that program was because I wanted to improve my Japanese in the first place. Because Hokudai is a really good school, there are a lot of opportunities that I was able to do there like joining a business competition or volunteering in different cities to teach English to high school students or attending a UNESCO World Conference, like things like that. Third, I was able to make a lot of friends because I love Hokkaido so much and the people who chose Hokkaido also really love Hokkaido as well so we would travel around Hokkaido and that was great it really really aligned with my goals as for my deciding factors number one since I was taking Japanese lessons and Japanese cultural lessons all of the credits tied back to my original degree in East Asian studies so I was safe second of all it also was very affordable because compared to Tokyo like in terms of a long time, they also had half a year as well as one year program, so I chose the one year program. So that's how I decided on Hokkaido University's JLCSP program. So that's the mindset that I had when even looking for an exchange program in the first place. Once you have all of your requirements like set, you know, okay, this is what I want, and if they have this, I will I will take it. Go and search up your university's international website. In my case, very easy to find, just search up U Alberta International. The first page that comes up has a list of all of the different exchange programs available which you can search by country, by school, etc, etc. I would look through all of the exchange programs in Japan because I knew I wanted to go to Japan. Then I would look at the different universities that were available for exchange through my university and I found Hokudai. Next, I started looking through the exchange programs and what they offer. Some places they only had programs offered in English which obviously I didn't want and other programs like the one at Hokudai had courses offered in Japanese so I went with that one. Next, like I mentioned in the beginning, it can be broken down even further and you should also check the price of the exchange, the length of the exchange, as well as the requirements for the exchange. I'll be going over this in the applying section but there are specific requirements that you should be aware of for each exchange and some of them may be faculty specific so you want to be careful of that as well. Other than that, if you do have your goals as well as your deciding factors set and you are able to look for the right university, then choose that one and let's get started on how to apply. For applying, it's quite easy, quite easy to apply as long as you follow all of the steps and do your research and document preparation way beforehand. So let's get started and I'll show you my university's website. Whew. Basically, there's just two things that you have to keep in mind before applying. One of them is the overall requirements for the exchange. So for my university, we have certain overall requirements that you have to fulfill before you even think of applying. And second, make sure to check the specific program that you want to apply for because they might have program specific requirements as well. So make sure you do your research and check if you are eligible or not. So once you've checked whether or not you're eligible, the next step is to apply. For us, we do it through a portal called Horizons, which will take you to a page that looks almost exactly like this. And if you look on the left hand side of the screen where the gray boxes are, these are the different documents that I had to prepare in order to apply for my exchange at Hokkaido University. So as you read through this, make sure you remember which documents you need. And also keep in mind that you will have to pay a nomination fee of around $250 as well. Once you've submitted all your documents as well as paid the nomination fee, all you need to do now is to submit your application and wait for the acceptance of your application by your university as well as the acceptance from the host university, of which you will probably be notified by email. 
Finally, some advice. Don't just search for the program and its application requirements. Also see and search if your school or your province or state or prefecture or your country or that exchange country's government offers any scholarships and apply for those as well because what it's free money for going on exchange make sure while you're applying for the exchange also look for scholarships that you can apply to as well i'm sure your country has some too so check it out <laughs> i'll also link it down in the description box below for alberta canada japan and my university so if you want those links they're down below but yes, thank you so much for watching to the end. Give yourself a round of applause. That's a lot of information. Woo. Thank you so much for listening to me talk. I hope all of the information was useful. Overall, good job to you for even wanting to go and exchange in the first place. It's such a big step. You're doing so well and you're going to have so much fun. So believe in yourself and you got this. I will help you as much as I can to get you on that exchange in Japan. So let's do this together. Anyways, I hope that video on how to look for an exchange program and how to apply for an exchange program as the first step was useful for you. Please keep tuned and hit that subscribe button for the next video part in this whole series where I will be talking about how to become mentally and physically and emotionally prepared for exchange. After that, a video that I'm really excited about uploading is how to thrive and live your best life as an exchange student because I lived my best life as an exchange student. It was so awesome and I also want you to have such an amazing experience as well and I hope that this month of February will be really useful for you who is about to to go on exchange or even considering going exchange yes thank you so much for watching once again like subscribe and comment and i will see you in the next video bye bye bye